Hello and welcome to the Unit 8 podcast on chemical equilibrium. Today we're going to be discussing uh, what equilibrium is. So I'm Mr. Lin. And I'm Mr. Sakaguchi. And let's start. So what is equilibrium itself? Equilibrium is something specific for uh, what we call reversible reactions. Now most reactions we've talked about only go in one direction, but there are some that go both forward and reverse. So when you uh, see this kind of reaction uh, displayed in an equation, it uses double arrows. And because the reaction can go forwards and backwards, um, there's a dynamic shifting in both directions towards product and reactant that occurs. This doesn't necessarily mean that the reactants and products are in equal concentrations or amounts. It just means that the rate of, re of the reaction forwards and backwards is the same. And so equilibrium is, is, uh, is dynamic because it's in a state of constant motion. And it may look like the reaction actually stopped, but it really hasn't. It's still going, uh, moving at the same time. So for instance, if I gave Mr. Sakaguchi $5 and then later he gives me $5 back for something and then we keep exchanging money back and forth, our actual amount of money in our wallet stays the same, but we're constantly shifting money between us. Right. And then this is just... A, a kind of a graph to kind of quantify what equilibrium looks like if we looked at the forward and reverse reactions and notice how it equals out. We can also e express equilibrium through uh, an equation and basically this is something from the law of chemical equilibrium that basically states that at a given temperature the system may reach a state in which the ratio of reactants and products will have uh, a constant value. So what you're going to be paying attention to for uh, this equation are the coefficients that are associated with each of the compounds, either uh, for both products and reactants. And what winds up happening is when you set up this equation, products are on top, reactants are underneath, and your coefficients wind up being exponents that are multiplied by the molarity concentrations of each of the compounds. Remember that these square brackets, basic, these mean that um, these are concentrations, which are normally going to be molarities. So the, the stuff we learned from last section is going to come into play again. Right. And uh, when we solve for KEQ, we're going to slide into that next part. Um, and what that means is that when you have a KEQ value greater than 1, then that means that there are more products than reactants for equilibrium and then whereas if you have less than one then your the equilibrium shifted in the other direction and you have more reactants than products when everything is equalized exactly uh, there is homogeneous equilibrium and heterogeneous equilibrium homogeneous equilibrium is when all the states of matter for the reactants and products are identical heterogeneous is when they're not equal now, um, when they are homogeneous, you wind up uh, calculating it like normal, like we showed previously. However, when it's heterogeneous, you have to pay attention to the fact that they are different, um, that they are in different states of matter. As a result, as uh, is shown in this example here, the, the liquid is not part of the concentration, is not part of the equilibrium, because it's separated out from the gaseous phase which is where all the, where the equilibrium is shifting. Now remember, these are all function of concentrations, okay? So the only way you can have concentrations is when you have aqueous or gases, okay? If you have liquids or solids, they're pure, so there's no way to have a concentration of something that's pure. So this is why they're not included in equilibrium expressions. So pure liquids and solids, if you see them, they do not show up in the equilibrium equations, okay? So when uh, you solve for your KEQ value, the concentrations can be found experimentally, and you take the measured amount of your molarities and you solve it into the equation to find out if product or reactant is, uh, is in favor of the equilibrium. The KEQ value will always be the same so long as the concentrations are at equilibrium. Yeah, so the KEQ value, the, num the number of the ratio, will always be constant no matter how much or how little uh, reactants and products you may begin with. Because once you get to equilibrium, 
the concentrations at equilibrium in the ratio in, will, will always equal KEQ. Right. And so if we're looking to solve for concentrations at equilibrium, what we can do sometimes is we can substitute in uh, un, uh, concentrations we know at equilibrium and then solve for the ones that we don't know uh, if, if we know that KEQ is at a given value. Yeah, if we have the value for it. That's it.